Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you how to create a vertical blind background using the Summer Bloom stamp set from the new Days of Summer Stamp TV kit. This background is quick and easy to do and adds so much interest to any card project. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do this project. First, you're going to need some ink. And I'm using some of the Gina K Designs inks in Black Onyx, Ocean Mist, Turquoise Sea, Blue Raspberry, and Fresh Asparagus. Then I have a little bit of the Gina K Designs Black Gingham Ribbon. I have a sponge dauber and a craft pick. I have some of the stamps from the Summer Blooms Stamp TV kit, one of the sets from the Stamp TV kit, and I'm using three of the flowers and the little leaf, and then I'm using one of the greetings from the stamp set, A Wish for You, and that also comes in the Days of Summer Stamp TV kit. Then I have some cardstock, and the colors that I'm using are the Gina K Designs White, some of the Black Onyx, and some of the Blue Raspberry. I have some black brads and some scissors. And then I have a few dies. I have one of the Spellbinders dies from the Lacy Ovals collection. I'm sorry, from the Lacy Circles collection. And I have one of these tags. And this is from the Spellbinders Fancy Tags 3 collection, the middle one there. And then I have two of the standard circles. These are all dies made by Spellbinders. And of course, I have a little bit of adhesive. Now you're going to need a paper cutter for this, and you're also going to need some kind of die cutting machine. I'm going to use my cuddle bug. So to begin, I'm gonna start with the greeting. So I'm going to use some of this black onyx ink and grab the little greeting stamp from that A Wish For You stamp set. And then I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock. Now you don't have to use one quite this big. I'm going to cut this out with a circle die, so I only need a small section, and it's going to be a fairly small shape, so I'll just stamp it somewhere down in the corner of this piece of cardstock. So I'm going to ink up my stamp with some of the black onyx ink and stamp it. Now I'm just going to check that to make sure that that fits and my circle isn't going to go off the piece of cardstock and that will be just fine. So I'm going to put this piece aside and I'm going to grab another piece of white to start my background. I've decided to do this background using a lot of the blues from our collection. I just love these turquoise blues and then this blue raspberry all together. So. I'm going to start with the Ocean Mist, my lightest color first, and I'm going to use this large dandelion flower. These are the dandelions when they're all seeds, this flower. And I'm going to stamp one in the middle, and that's going to kind of guide me for the rest of my stamping. So this way I can stamp kind of in a pattern, but not too much in a pattern. I'm going to be turning my stamp as I go, and just offsetting the flowers a little bit so they don't look too patterned, but I want to make sure that I don't have too much white space left over. There we go. And I do have this really nice Scorpal mat under my workspace, but since I'm going to stamp off of my piece of cardstock, I am going to put a scrap piece of paper underneath just so I don't have to clean up the mat afterwards. Not that it's a big deal, but I don't have a paper towel here at my studio desk. So I'm going to continue to add these little pieces of flowers coming in from the different angles. And I think I'm done with that flower. So the next flower that I'm going to use is this sketchy line art one. This one I'm going to do with the blue raspberry ink. I want this one to be a little bit brighter. And I'm going to fill in some of that white space. I'll do one there. I'll do one there. And you can see I am making somewhat of a pattern, but I'm trying to stagger it just a bit. And this will give me 
a nice finish to my corners there. You want to make sure that it looks a little bit random. Now these are the these are good flowers to use because these are the ones that the leaves are going to come off of. So and the leaves are going to fill in a lot of that white space as well. So there we go. Now I'm going to add the turquoise C, and that one is going to be done in this little tiny flower. And this little flower is pretty solid, so it'll jump out a little bit more. It's a little bit deeper than our ocean mist. So it'll stand out from the ocean mist. And I'm filling in a lot of that white space. And you can also see that I'm stamping right over other flowers. I'm not worried about that at all. That's what makes it look like a real garden. Flowers grow all over the place. They don't worry about who's in front of them or what's in front of them. So you do want to stamp that all over and get it nice and clustered. Okay. So there is the turquoise C. And for my last image, I'm going to use the little leaf stamp. And this one is going to be done in the fresh asparagus. So this one, there's a little notch right there. You can see that little notch. And I'm just going to insert that between a couple of petals to make it look like it's shooting out of those flowers. It's very, very easy to line up. And first I'm going to go through and fill in white space areas that I see. And then I'm going to go back and add more into other areas so I have a consistent amount of green going around the project. At least one set of leaf leaves off of each of these flowers. And again, I'm going around the, the blue raspberry flowers. Now you can do yours differently if you want. You don't have to go around the blue raspberry flowers. You can go around the little flowers. You can pick and choose what flowers you want to have leaves on. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. There's lots of fun ways to create your own garden. And this is a similar look to that pink card that I made last week. However, we're going to chop this all up and make it into a really, really fun background. So I can see that I still need a few more kind of going off the cardstock a little bit. Let's do one here. I think I need one up here. That looks pretty good. Maybe one more up in this area. Let's do one here. There we go. Okay. So there I have my flowers. Oh, I see one more spot that really needs it. And that would be right here. There we go. Okay, so now I have my flower garden all done in those beautiful blues. And my next step is going to be to cut this up. Now, this piece of cardstock measures four and a half inches across. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some cuts. So let me grab my paper cutter here. And all of the measurements will be over at Stamp TV right under the video. But you'll be able to see it here. I'll talk you through it. Okay, so this measures four and a half inches across. And then it's three and three quarter inches, well, high, because my card is going to be oriented this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by counting down three quarters of an inch. So one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. So I'm going to go on to the three quarter of an inch line. I know that's hard for you to see. But what you're going to do is you're going to go from four and a half inches down to three and three quarter inches. And that's going to make the strip that you cut off a three quarter inch strip like that. Now your next mark is going to be three inches. So you're going to go down to the three inch line and cut another strip like that. 
Now you're going to go down to the two and a quarter inches and cut another three quarter inch strip and to one and a half inches. There's another one. And to one inch. Well, let's make sure that's right. That is not right. One and a half. You're going to go down to three quarters of an inch, which is right on the blade there. And then what's left is a three quarter inch panel. So there are all of my panels, and they're still in the same order. So if I put them back together, it would still make a complete picture, like a puzzle. So let me take these off here. I'm going to take them off in order just so I don't have to do a puzzle here when I'm assembling my card. Now, of course, you can mix them up if you want, but if you don't mix them up, it really kind of has an interesting look. So now my next step here is to take this piece of black cardstock, and this card piece of cardstock measures four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm going to begin to lay these out across this piece. Now, the one thing that you don't want to do when you're gluing these down is you don't want to start at one side and work your way over. You want to start at one side, and I'll do that one first. You want to start at one side. Let's get this one down first. Find the, the right amount of perimeter there so that it looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay. And now the next one you want to do is the very last one, and you want to get that one fairly even on that side. And this way you'll know that your sides are even, and you've got to kind of position the ones in the middle to fit in there well. So now I'm going to lay them back out again and spread them out just evenly so that the black lines in between look pretty even. And then I can start to tape them down. If you don't do the other end first, you're going to end up with either too much black on the other end or not enough black. So there's kind of a good look. Now, you can always lift this back up and reposition them if they're not perfect. Especially if you're using this uh, mono adhesive, this dot style mono, mono adhesive, it's pretty forgiving and it does allow you to move a piece once you've stuck it down as long as you don't press super hard on it. So, all right, we'll do the next one. You can see I'm not pressing down very hard just yet, I'm just placing them. Excuse my head if it gets in the way here. Kind of a little difficult to see if I'm not right on top. Okay, and I'm going to keep placing these down. And you can see how those little splits look like Venetian blinds. These look like the little panels of Venetian blinds, but it's neat when the picture is still complete. So you haven't mixed up all the little individual strips. They still work as if it was one complete picture. Okay, now this one I'm going to move over just a hair, and then I'm going to reposition a couple of the other ones. They pick right up because I haven't stuck them down too hard yet. So that'll give me a little bit wider margins in between, which is nice. do this one just a hair over and that looks pretty well positioned so there we go 
Now I can press down on all of that glue and make it more permanent. Okay. Then I'm going to add a little piece of ribbon across the center and then adhere the whole thing to my card base. So there. You know I love my black gingham ribbon. I would suggest if you're getting any supplies, get some extra black gingham because that is just one that I use all the time. And then this whole panel will sit on top of this blue raspberry card base. But I'm going to add some bread, so we'll put that on last. Now my next step is going to be to grab my cuddle bug and I'm going to cut out some of these pieces including the greeting panel. I'm going to start with an A and a B plate and I'm going to cut out using the smallest round die which is this one. Position that it's a nice tight squeeze, but it makes it. And put a C plate on top and cut. Now I'm also going to emboss this one, and you guys know how to emboss by now, but let's do it. We're going to flip it upside down and then put this little rubber mat on top, another B plate, and a piece of chipboard for my cuddle bug. And then we'll put that whole piece aside because we're going to sponge a little bit of ocean mist on there before we apply it to the card. So I'll put that one aside. Now I'm going to need a blue raspberry piece, this one here. So that fits nicely. So I have an A and a B plate and then a C plate on top. And then this one can also be embossed, which I love. This one is so pretty. Let me pop this out. And then flip it over and put that rubber mat on top and my other B plate and chipboard and run it through again. piece is ready to come out. See how pretty this one is. You have to be a little bit careful when you're pulling these out. Spellbinders recommends that you run their dies through wax paper if they get a little bit sticky at first and that helps a lot too. But there is that pretty panel in the blue raspberry. And then I wanted to show you guys this. This is my scalloped circle. Now, you might have trouble getting these little pieces out. If you do, just take your craft pick and you can poke those right out. Look how quickly and easily they come out. It's so easy to do. And then you'll get nice clean cuts each time you use them. Don't leave those little pieces in there because it will clog up the die and it won't give you nice crisp cuts. So we're going to take a piece of black here and we're going to cut this circle and this small circle. So we've got the lacy circle and this classic or standard circle and a C plate. We won't need to emboss these. We just want to pull those through. Actually, let's emboss the, the lacy one because that'll be pretty. This one we won't need to emboss. I'll just put this one aside. But we'll emboss this one with the rubber mat, the B plate, and the chipboard. And there's that lacy circle. And those will pop right out of the, the die cut once you pull it out of the, the die. So there's the lacy circle. And now it's time to assemble this pretty card. All right, let's grab this little greeting and that sponge dauber and some of this ocean mist ink. Now what I want to do with this is I want to get a little ink onto this sponge dauber and then gently coming from outside of the circle, I just want to do a circular motion and add a little bit of color in there. Not a lot, and it's not going to look like much until you actually pull it out of the die, and then you'll see how bright and vibrant it is. 
but it does bring in some of that blue into this center of this greeting. Because your greeting in this card is kind of your focal image. And then we'll pop that out of the die. And there we go. So now it's time to put it all together. So we have our Venetian blind background here. And now I'm going to position these two pieces together with a little bit of tape. Get them nice and even. And then this whole piece, that doesn't look as even as I want it. There we go. And then this whole panel is going to go on top of this blue raspberry panel. And you can see it'll give just a tiny little border going around, which is so pretty. And make sure that it's straight on there. A little bit straighter, I think, would be better. Okay. There we go. And now this whole panel is going to go on top of this scalloped circle. And I want to make sure that I have a split right at the top between two scallops at the top here and at the bottom. And that'll make it very centered. And you can kind of center these little things too around a around one of the little lacy scallops there like that. And if that doesn't look, if your greeting doesn't look straight, we can always reposition the greeting. So let's get this tacked down with some adhesive first so that that works right around. There we go. And now I'm gonna peel this off and I'm gonna straighten it a little bit. There we go. That is so pretty. And this is going to go right on top. And I'm going to position the split right here in that circle, right in between my center black line of my Venetian blinds. So I'll just use a little bit of tape for this, top and bottom. I'm going to pick that up so I can look at it while I do it. And I also want to make sure that it's centered on my ribbon. So it's centered everywhere. There we go. Top and bottom like that. And now I'm going to grab this little piece of mouse pad and I'm going to take my craft pick and I'm going to poke a hole right in that little crease right there. And I'm going to grab a couple of black brads. And place one in that hole. And that'll kind of hold that piece down. Turn it over. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Right in. That little hole there. Pop the bread in like that. And secure the bread on the back. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of tape. And a little on the ribbon. Make sure everything looks pretty straight. It does. And now that will go on to my blue raspberry card base. There is my finished card project.
Try this technique with a simple textured background stamp for a more subtle or masculine look. Or try using bold geometric images for a funky fresh backdrop for any card project.